Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Grant and I'm the host of Remington Graphics and today I'm here with you guys to take a look at 11 different Blender features that you may not have known existed. All these features are pretty small, however they can make a big impact on your productivity and renders if you use them properly. So let's go ahead and jump right into number one. Most of the time when you render something you have to deal with some sort of noise left in the image. There's no way to get a perfectly noise free render. However, noise can become very distasteful, especially when rendering animations because it's so prominent and it a lot of the time doesn't have any animation. You can actually make this noise look a lot more natural by animating it. All you have to do is go into the properties menu and into the render settings and then under the sampling tab. Click the little stopwatch next to the sample seed and all of a sudden all of your frames will have a different seed for the samples. That way there are no two frames that have the same seed and each frame has its own noise pattern. And as you can tell by this footage, it always looks a lot better when the seed is animated as opposed to being static. Now let's go ahead and jump into number two here, which is saving a startup file. That way when you start up Blender, all of your files and settings and assets are already there and you have no need to import them again. I'm sure plenty of you know how to do this, but I'm going to go over it anyway just because it's a really useful feature and nobody should go without it. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and append my Procedural Pro version 2, which is coming soon. I already have it done, but I'm waiting to release it. I'm going to go ahead and import that into my Blender file, and I'm going to come up to File and click Save Startup File. And this way, whenever we start it up, that will be included in it so we don't have to open it. So if I go ahead and open up Blender again here. And then I go down and open up the node editor and I go ahead and press shift a group and you can see we have procedural pro imported and ready to go. This also works with different blender settings. So as you can see, mine automatically launches into cycles as opposed to blender internal. And it also automatically opens up to the GPU rendering as opposed to the CPU rendering. So now let's go ahead and take a look at number three, which is the ability to create a clay render or a single material render in a really short amount of time. All you have to do is go into the scene tab and there's a little box there that says material. Select your material in that box and hit render and all of the objects in your scene will be rendered with that material. No need to go around changing the material for every single object. Next up we have number four, which is locking your camera to your view. Now this is another pretty well known one, however if you don't know it, it's really useful. If you go into the properties menu of the 3D viewport and check the box that says lock camera to view, you can go ahead and when you're in the camera view, you can go ahead and zoom around and stuff and the camera will reposition itself to be in whatever position you're looking at. So that way you can reposition the camera really easily. Next up at number five, we have render borders. Now, if you're working with a really complex scene in cycles and you're in the rendered view, a lot of the times it is very intensive and it takes a lot of your computer's resources. What you can do to get around this is in the render menu, under the first tab, there is a little button that says, or a little checkbox that says border. If you check that, what it'll do is it'll restrict the area that it processes to just what the camera sees when you're in the camera view. This speeds up the time it takes to process the image while you're in the rendered view. However, it won't actually speed up your renders when you render your image. But it's really useful for productivity's sake. So the last tip was really great for the viewport, but what about actually speeding up your render times? Well, there's a way to do this too. If we come over here into the properties menu and we scroll down to the performance tab right here, you can see we have these things called tiles. If you're rendering on a GPU, you want to make sure X and Y are both set to 256. And if you're rendering on a CPU, you want to make sure X is set to 16 and Y is also set to 16. And from here, we'll jump straight into number seven, which is changing the light paths. Now, I actually already have modified this to what it should be. So it should be about six and zero, six, 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 zero, six, zero. Just keep it around six to eight. Um, somewhere in there for all of them. Make sure the minimums are always set to zero. And basically what this does is it reduces the amount of bounces that light can take. So if you have a lamp source or a light source and light is bouncing around, it'll only bounce six times instead of bouncing eight times. And if your computer doesn't have to calculate those extra two times, it'll speed up your rendering a lot. Typically I believe this is set to 12 and eight and this is set to like 12, 12, 12, something like that. You really just have to drop it down a bunch and it'll make it a lot faster. However, don't drop it too low, otherwise your renders will come out looking really inaccurate and really, really strange. In addition, if you choose to do so, you can also turn off reflective and refractive caustics, but I like to leave those on. 
Another feature you may not have known about is the display menu. So if we come into the object settings over here, we have this little tab called display where we can display all sorts of data and change how we view our objects in the viewport. If we check name, the name of the object is displayed next to our object. If we check axis, there is now an axis here. And if we check wire, we now see a wireframe of the outside. If we check bounds, we can see the bounding box. If we check like cylinder, you can see that. You can also check x-ray where if we look behind here, you can see the object through other objects. And also we have this thing called minimum draw type. So I'm actually gonna do this on this one because I had a little thing set up here. Um, so say we're working with a smoke simulation. This is our domain. Um, what we can actually do is we can change this to wire. And now you can see, whoa, there is another box inside that you guys didn't even know about. We can also turn on x-ray and switch this back to textured. And now you can see there, it's kind of funky to look at, but there is a little box inside of the other box that we can see and select. That way we don't have to worry about not being able to see it in the future. You can also change things like object color, which I'm really not sure what this does, um, but it's there and there's a few other things where I'm not sure what they do, but. And as you can tell by my uncertainty, I am a certified Blender professional. I am terrible at telling jokes. I'm good at puns. Does that count? All right, so let's go ahead and get back on track for number eight. In the viewport, there's a really awesome feature in the little properties menu over here. If we come down to matte cap and we check this, it basically changes the material that we see in the blue in the viewport. If we click on the material over here, we can see there's a bunch of different options. We have this metal material. We can have this rainbow material. I think this is normals, maybe. I don't even know. Um, we can have just Fresnel, just like that, and we can have this shaded metal and there's all sorts of different materials that you can use and they all have different purposes for example something like this might be good for modeling because you can see more of a contour than if it weren't there so you can see a lot more contrast so you can get a lot more of those details whereas something like this you know I don't even know everything has a use I'm sure there's a use that you can find I'm not exactly sure what you can find though and number 10 is actually located right below matte cap it is ambient occlusion. If we check this, it turns on this little fake ambient occlusion. In here, you can change the strength down here. So you can see it's just that really simple ambient occlusion that we can see. And this just helps to preview it a bit better. You can make it a lot more, um, well, I mean, it looks more realistic in the viewport than when you didn't have it. So it looks more like it's well lit as opposed to just existing. In addition, there's also this little depth of field thing here. I don't have a camera set up right now though, but you can also preview depth of field if you have it set up. And finally, we're on to number 11, which is one of the simplest, but most helpful in a lot of situations. So say for some reason my Blender project is doing this. It is jumping, there are no keyframes, and it's definitely not because of the wave modifier I have over here. I need help. So I go to a forum for help and somebody requests a screenshot. Well, typically I'd come down here to Windows and type in snipping tool and all that. No, there is an easier way. You come up to window and click save screenshot or click control F3. You click that, it chooses where to save it to. I wanna save it to my desktop and I'll call this bouncing thingy, thingy misspelled. Save screenshot and now if I miss, or oh, there's Vegas. Now if I come down here, you can see we have a PNG here called Bouncing Thingy and it is a screenshot and it is in full resolution and it is awesome. But in all honesty, this is a really useful feature. I've used it to get help myself. And I've also used it to show what I'm working on to my clients. In addition, there's also apparently a way to um, screencast, um, but I don't know how that works because whenever I click it, um, I get this thing and it doesn't ever save anywhere even if I click X on the capture thing up here. So if anybody knows how to use that, please tell me because that's actually another really useful feature. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below and if you know any other Blender tips, be sure to leave them down in the comments so other people know about them. In addition, stay tuned for Procedural Pro version 2, which I totally didn't purposefully accidentally give you a little sneak peek at in this video. And also hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. That's about it for this video, so I'll see you guys later. Adios. Lately I've seen you on television